Welcome back, Edgeteers. Well, as the title of the video says, I've discovered through testing what type of dilated cardiomyopathy I have. It's been something that's been a bit of a mystery for some time, so I'm actually glad to know. And I want to fill you in and let you know what's going on. But before I do, TLDR, if you're not sure what's going on here, make sure you check out my video called The One Video I Never Wanted to Have to Make, which talks in detail about how I came to have dilated cardiomyopathy, which, to make a long story short, is an enlargement of the heart, which eventually leads to heart failure. And if it's I don't get a heart transplant, which is imminent now, uh, not the heart transplant, but the failure of my heart. Um, I probably won't carry on, but I am going to look into getting what's called a left ventricle assist device, which is a pump that, although risky, we're hoping that it can hold me over until I can get a heart transplant. In order to get to be on the list for a heart transplant, my weight must be 250 pounds or less. I've currently lost 28 pounds. I'm down to 277. I need to get down to 250, so I have another 28 pounds or so to lose. And I've been pushing really hard lately, and I'll go into that in just a minute. But, so I had to go for an MRI a couple of weeks ago. Well, actually about a week ago. And uh, I was very nervous because they had to disable some of the settings in my internal defibrillator pacemaker. And I'm being paced about 40% of the time now. When I got my original ICD, I was being paced about 5 to 10% of the time. And then a year ago, it was up to 20%. And today, it's up to 40%. So the MRI exam, the purpose was to see if part of my heart could be ablated, which means burned off. Um, they're looking specifically for scar tissue. So the hope was they could burn part of my heart off and it would stop the abnormal rhythms that I've been getting, especially the one that sent me to the hospital and led to my getting shocked several times with the paddles while I was awake, which I am still having issues with, although not as many right now. Um, what they found with the MRI is that ablation probably isn't going to be successful if they do it, but they still want to try at a later date. The reason why is because I have on my heart, you know, there's a lot of scar tissue inside the chambers and on the outside. So it's not likely that the ablation will do any good um, because there's just too much scar tissue and they can only take off so much. They can only burn off so much of your heart before you start to have really bad problems. So I really doubt that they're going to do that. Um, and if they do, I'm not sure of the success. So what they did find out with the MRI is what type of dilated cardiomyopathy. Actually, it's not a type. It's a cause. So uh, according to my doctors, and I haven't done too much research on this, kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies when I do too much research on this stuff. So what I discovered was that I have a condition called non-compaction. I believe they called it syndrome. I don't remember. Uh, but it's non-compaction caused dilated cardiomyopathy. So what that basically means, um, when you are born, the heart walls of your heart are very thickened. And... As you age through the first couple of years of your life, the heart walls begin to thin out and become what we consider a normal heart today. Well, unfortunately, mine never did. Um, instead of thinning out, mine stayed thickened, which made my heart have to work extra hard, which probably explains why I've had these palpitations all my life. Um, 
I remember, I don't know if I told this story in my previous videos, so I'll try to make it short, but I remember when I was about 16, I had a palpitation. Well, actually, it was worse than that. It was a long run. Um, I was in metal class where we worked with various metals, heating them, bending them, welding them, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, I think it was in ninth or 10th grade, and I needed help. We were creating a plumb bob, which is a device you use to uh, make sure that uh, things you're constructing are plumb or vertically level, if you will. I don't know how else to describe it. But anyway, we needed to use a lathe to create our plumb bobs. So I asked the instructor to show me something on the lathe, and he said, sure, come with me. And he got in front of me, and we walked back to the lathe. And right then, I had a run of, I don't know what it was, palpitations, VTAC, I have no idea. And it really freaked me out. Well, the instructor went to the lathe, and he goes, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put your plumb bob in the lathe. And he turns around and looks at me, and he says, are you okay? And I'm like, you know, about to pass out. So I'm thinking, no, but being a typical teenager, I said, yeah, I'm fine. And he said, are you sure? You're white as a ghost. Which is, as my friends like to say, not really anything new. I'm usually very pale skinned. So, but in this case, I literally was about to pass out and sick to my stomach, but I Pretended it was no big deal. Later, I did have more of those episodes, and uh, I went to a physician. He kind of poo-pooed it, and he's like, you're young, you know. What's the likelihood that you could be having these problems? You know, all you need to do is tap your neck here or bear down and, or cough, and you'll be fine. It's just your heart running because of caffeine. You're drinking too much caffeine, which I wasn't. Um... So uh, it went on for a while, and what eventually led me to get all the testing was my brother being really sick and me pushing my regular MD to really look at um, see me seeing a cardiologist because of the symptoms I was having. The bad news is uh, non-compaction dilated cardiomyopathy. There's not a thing I could do about it or could have done about it. Um, it's the way it is. It is genetic. I don't think my brother got an MRI. Uh, if you watched the previous video, you know he passed away from the same complications I'm having. Um, so, um, so all I can do from here is move forward. The current ICD I have in it's not really designed necessarily for pacing all the time so we need a unit that can pace my whole heart which means I'll need to get another wire lead put in which means they will have to test the new device and shock me which means it could cause me to have um, another dangerous episode of arrhythmias so I have to stay over in the hospital I, I definitely am for getting the new ICD because if it improves my cardiac output, which my doctor doubts, um, I could put off maybe for a few more months um, not getting the LVAD, which is a huge major surgery. So I'm definitely of the opinion that anything that will help me shorten the time um, that I have to be on the LVAD would be a good thing because it's a very complicated device. Um, you have to be very careful. It takes a lot of training. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any way around it. I think I'm going to have to do it, but I'd like to put it off as long as possible. So as far as symptoms, last week I had many, many, many palpitations and I called the doctor and they did want me to go to emergency but about 10 minutes after I called them they simply stopped and I was fine it's I can't even understand why it's just the way it is and I have a home telemetry unit and I sent in a file from my ICD here which records all that activity and there were no dangerous rhythms 
Um, so it was just uh, pre premature ventricular contractions, PVCs, which can become dangerous, especially as my heart weakens, but are not as likely to become dangerous. Um, while I'm talking here, I'm actually kind of dizzy and not really feeling all that well. Uh, I did have an episode yesterday where I didn't feel good at all. It lasted about a half hour, so I was very dizzy and nauseated. And then it passed, and I don't know what caused it, but after it passed, I felt much better. Over the last few days, though, I've been going out and doing things, been trying to keep up my activities and keep up my morale uh, and think positively. That's really helped me and gave me more confidence to do daily activities. I did receive a call about an appointment I have coming up. So shortly here in about a week, I have to get a, a test that will look at the veins in my body to make sure I can accept that new wire lead through my heart. And then, of course, the ICD replacement at the beginning of March. When the lady called me, I told her I was feeling fine. And she said, well, that's really good. You just never know. You could go into a bad rhythm at any minute, so for now you're good, and that's really good. And I just, you get this sinking feeling, you know? It's like, thanks for shattering what little confidence I built back up, you know? of If you want to measure confidence, confidence in percentages, 100 being the best, you know, I had gotten myself up to like 20% and I was thinking maybe I'm out of the woods maybe I've got a month or two you know before something radical happens and I'm rushed back into the hospital but they always remind me that it could happen anytime I'm still on 24 7 watch I always have to have somebody here it's kind of a bummer but again like I said I try to remain positive and I have gone out and done more. The anxiety I spoke of before from being shocked uh, with the paddles, which was really bad. My device shocked me the first time uh, as a therapy to rescue my heart. And it wasn't as bad. The paddles were a horror. So whenever I start getting an abnormal rhythm or... I don't feel good my anxiety goes right up and that can cause my heart to get even worse so I try to just relax myself settle myself down say you know you don't really want to cause yourself to go into an abnormal rhythm so you better relax because if you don't relax you're going to the hospital or worse and I've been mostly successful at doing that because I know what the stakes are there's no point in panicking because the panic will make me go to the hospital so I've gotten a lot better at handling that um, I think I'm closing in on a level where I can stop taking medicine at night to help me sleep so I will begin uh, trying to come down off that I was taking Xanax uh, once per day at night or if I get overly panicked during the day I will take one but I think uh, I can probably go ahead and start breaking it in half and cut down and wean myself off of it and go off it I think it's time I, I I'm able to for the most part control my thoughts and keep them from that area of negativity it's hardest at night i don't know why you know it's dark i'm laying in the bed for some reason laying in the bed really gets to me and i have to really really focus my attention on some area in my mind that gives me respite and you're probably gonna laugh at this but one of the things i do is i'll be laying in bed and my mind will start rolling it's like, oh, yeah, remember when you got shocked? Remember uh, the nurse came in and said, should we shock him? Should we shock him? You know, and I start going through the whole story in my head. And I'm like, stop, Mark, just stop, just stop. So what I think about is my new computer, the 2700X, and what other tests I can run on it 
and I try to get my mind into analytical mode. So I start thinking, what could I do with this computer? Um, what do I want to accomplish with it? How good is it with video editing? Do I need to report that to you know my YouTube viewers and and so I become really analytical, which to me is endlessly fascinating. You know, all the ins and outs of the new computer, how it works, why it works, comparing it to my old computer, which is in the other room. Um, thinking about, I want to do a video on, is it really feasible to edit on a laptop in Linux? Um, because I've been doing that as well compared to my desktop. And so I'm going to do a video on that. And then I can, all of a sudden I find I'm falling asleep. It's almost like counting sheep for me. It's so positive and it just feels so good to think about it. I, I kind of like come to every, you know, maybe it takes me an hour, hour and a half to fall asleep. And I'm like, I think I was sleeping. And I'm like, now nah, about that computer. <laughs> and I end up falling asleep. So I, I guess as long as I can keep my thoughts from straying, I'll be okay. It will be the great experiment to see how I do tonight. I'm going to cut my medicine in half and go from there. And ironically, on the beginning, the beginning of March when I have the ICD replacement, which I'm really nervous about, I cannot take any medicine to calm me down. So it's all going to have to be here right here because they can't risk my heart rate going too low and causing me to go into cardiac arrest i won't have my device in of course because they'll be replacing it so normally i'm not concerned about icd replacements they're pretty boring as far as surgical procedures go and you're out and walking and talking within an hour and after a day of observation you're out again going home so i try not to worry too much uh, but I do have to stop the Xanax. I can't take one that day. And I have to stop. This is awful. The medicine called metoprolol that is preventing the majority of the PVCs that I get. My dog is snoring. So cute. So that really concerned me, and I talked with the doctor about it. She says, like, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. You'll still, it's in your system for 24 hours. And I'm like, all right, but I'm taking 100 milligrams a day of that stuff. And you want me to stop at night, which is 50 milligrams, and then I probably won't get it in my system again until possibly as late as 24 hours later. So I will have half as much in my system. And that does scare me. Um... You know, the average palpitations per hour that I'm getting, um, depending on the time, is about 150. So that is what the ICD device here in my chest is telling us, that I'm getting about 150 of those an hour on average. I feel every one of them, and they can lead to panic. So mental discipline is going to be everything. Uh... The other thing is, you know, I just put my trust in God because it's not in my realm of control. There's not a thing I can do about it. So one thing I am going to do about it is go to, there's a hotel in the hospital. I'm going to go there the day before, the night before. So if I do have a dangerous arrhythmia, I'm literally seven floors away from um, cardiac ICU at the hospital I'm going to and they're very knowledgeable and they'll just get me in there and we'll go from there so I'll just relax I have family that is helping me through this and friends uh, had a good friend pray with me in the hospital when I was in there last which I was just amazed at how much that really helped me uh, and you know who you are um, my wife's family has helped out immensely. My sons have come and watched me. One of my sons lives here. Uh, he's been doing the majority of that, which I feel bad because he needs a social life. I mean, I, I feel bad. I want. I keep asking my doctor, can they just stop watching me now? Well, no, you know, if you can have somebody, you should. 
because we just don't know when a dangerous arrhythmia could start. Thanks. Thanks a lot for reminding me. Don't get too cocky is what they're saying. Um, but I have to put out a shout out to my family, my wife's family, and who came to see me every single day, me and my wife, and sat with us for five to six hours every single day. My sons who came up to the hospital who still keep coming over to literally babysit me. I mean, without family and friends, I don't know what I would do. I have a friend that I talk to via text almost every day. And he's the one who got me to start the diet. John, you know who you are. I think that without that diet, I would have literally just passed out because I could barely breathe when I was 306 pounds, and now I'm down to 277. And I was feeling really good. That's why I was so stunned that I had this dangerous arrhythmia because it literally dropped me when I knee to my knees in just a millisecond. I was like whoa I'm going out right now I mean instant tunnel vision I could barely see anything I couldn't breathe um, I was huffing and puffing you know hyperventilating but I wasn't getting any oxygen in my brain I could just tell and I don't want that again I really don't uh, but I do have to accept the fact that it's probably going to happen again it's just a matter of when um, it could be a long time from now or it could be soon but there's going to be a lot of surgeries and, and things I'm going to do in therapies getting up to that point. I don't want to rehash all that. It's it's in my video if you want to take a look at, look at it. The one video I never wanted to have to make. And I have a follow-up to that video as well. And this is the third in the series. So non-compaction dilated cardiomyopathy. If you do have dilated cardiomyopathy you should request an MRI. Even if you have an ICD, modern 1.5 Tesla MRIs are capable of doing an MRI on your heart with literally a 0.02% failure rate, uh, meaning that they could scramble the ICD and you have to be sent into surgery to get a new one. When you don't have to have the wires replaced, getting a new ICD, I have to say, is not really a big deal. They shoot you up some sleepy time happy medicine. You chill and relax. You get a cut about this long on your chest. They put a sort of like a permanent bandage over it that lasts like three weeks. And you're walking and talking and you're on your feet an hour later. It's not that bad. Um, and the ICD saved my life. So if you know, you're know you considering one, there's somebody I've been talking to uh, via text. Well, not text. Messaging back and forth on my YouTube videos and I hope you got your ICD I really do I know you were non-committal about it in some ways and the thing's a lifesaver and it tortures you a lot less than not having it and remember they're very humane they'll pace you first and you don't notice the pacing you just feel good so there's an excellent chance you just might feel better and have more cardiac output and I didn't get shocked for 10 years, so you never know. I hope this video is helpful to those of you who have dilated cardiomyopathy. Again, get an MRI. Uh, a good doctor should be able to see the thickened heart walls and make a better prognosis, although it doesn't really solve anything. But if it's genetic, you might want to look into that. I'm also going to be seeing a genetic counselor in a few weeks to get that started and work with my sons and make sure they're okay. And I've mentioned to them about the MRI because it's something that would show up even now before they have symptoms. So you could be asymptomatic, not have any symptoms, and still have dilated cardiomyopathy and not know that it's coming. It's going to get worse. Anyway, thank you for watching. I have to tell you before I go, your support has made all the difference in the world along with my family, my wife's family, and my friends. I honestly don't know what I would have done. I think I would have just stopped chugging and given up a long time ago. And I can't do that, you know. I got my sons. I got possible grandkids coming up in the future. I got a lot to look forward to. And I'm going to try and get as much information about this disease out as I can. 
um, while I'm still able and feeling good and I'm thinking get that weight off maybe in the future get a heart transplant and we might be talking another 25 years you'll be sick of me by then that's my sincerest hope and I remain positive and look forward to it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.